Chairman, I call the April 1st, 2024, Blue Spring City Council meeting to order. If you would stand with me, observe a moment of silence, and I will lead you in the Pledge of Allegiance. as well as those that might be watching at a later time. Uh, next, we'll have a confirmation of a quorum. Councilmember Kaler? Present. Levesay? Here. Fowler? Here. Erickson? Present. Edmondson? Here. Culpepper? Present. Mayor Ross? Present. We have a quorum. Next, we'll have the consent agenda, unless there are items need to be pulled, I accept the motion for approval. So moved. So second. second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Kaler? Aye. Levesay? Aye. Fowler? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Edmondson? Aye. Culpepper? Aye. Mayor Ross? Aye. Carried unanimously. Next, we have a public hearing on 105 Southwest 9th Street for Plex Rezoning and General Development Plan. Mayor, the city has one exhibit to enter into the record. City Council information form dated March 26, 2024 with the following attachments. Staff report with attachments, application with attachments, affidavit of publication the examiner on March 9th, 2024. A 185 foot notification map names addresses of property owners within 185 feet of the site. Copy of letter sent to said property owners. Title four land use section Blue Springs Code of Ordinance by reference. 2014 comprehensive plan by reference. Bill approving the rezoning and bill approving the general development plan with alternative development standards with two conditions. This is all we have to enter for the record. All right, staff report. I do. Okay, Dave McCumber. Here on behalf of the city, 903 West Main Street. Uh, before you this evening is a planning application for that was submitted by Ashley Clements and be on behalf of the Clementine Group for the property addressed 105 Southwest 9th Street. The planning application contains two requests, one of which is a rezone for the property from T3 Suburban to T5 Urban Center. And the second request is for a general development plan for an apartment building um, that would require remodeling the existing residential structure on the site. Today, the existing land use of the property is a legal non-conforming six unit boarding house. What's being proposed is a four unit walk-up apartment building. The city's future land use map for this particular area, or more specifically, an area specific plan has not been created for the downtown area of Blue Springs. However, other sections of the comprehensive plan does designate the area as a distinct destination, which emphasizes a mix of land uses that support the street and pedestrian circulation system, civic and open spaces, and creates a defined focal point. The proposed improvements as part of the general development plan include, but are not limited to, the paving of a four space parking lot that's currently gravel. The downtown development code requires one space per unit, which the applicant is providing. They're also providing bicycle parking, pedestrian connections in the form of sidewalks leading from the parking area to the entrances of the units. And they're also proposing to bury the overhead electrical service from the power pole in the rear of the lot to the meter cans on the building. Some other improvements that have been communicated is uh, the building permit to convert the six unit boarding house to a four unit apartment building, exterior painting, window replacement with like style and color window design, and other minor exterior building improvements. The existing land use is no longer allowed in the zoning district or any zoning district. The conversion to a less dense apartment building requires zoning to T5 where the building pipe type is permitted. The proposed zoning gives the ownership flexibility on the site for future development. However, if any existing changes or any significant changes 
to the property later would be required um, for a general development plan, a revised general development plan. The zoning change would also better align with the goals listed in the comprehensive plan and downtown master plan, which emphasize mixed uses, additional residential units, and providing unique experiences to the downtown area. With T5 zoning ad directly adjacent to the property and potentially in the future on the property to the east, the request is justified and is supported by staff. The general development plan makes a concerted effort to meet the city's current downtown development code and more broadly the unified development code, which can be a challenge when retrofitting a property of such age and historical significance. What has been proposed is considered an upgrade to the property and is likely to have a positive impact on the surrounding area. The applicant has chosen to renovate the existing structure, which was constructed in the 1890s and is considered historic, instead of proposing to demolish and start new. The decision helps to protect the character of the immediate area as demolition, or as it relates to architecture, building massing, local history, and overall site design. It also retains the historic visual relationship between itself and the neighboring properties. With that, staff recommends approval of the rezoning application. Staff also recommends approval of the general development plan with alternative development standards with two conditions. And just so the council is aware, uh, there was an error made in the Planning Commission staff report regarding the number of conditions. The number of conditions listed in the report states only one condition. However, there are two conditions um, for this application. And with that, I'll hand it over for questions. Okay, any questions from the council? Seeing none, thank you. Is the applicant present? I just got off the phone with the applicant. Uh, she is hurriedly trying to make it right now. She thought the meeting was at 6.30, but she said she was a minute away. Well, we're not going to wait for her. Okay. <laughs> we're going to go to the public. Is there anyone who know what it's like to speak in support of? Support of. Opposition to. Opposition to. Close this public hearing. Who would like to introduce bill number 5199? I will introduce it, Your Honor. Okay. First reading of bill 5199, an ordinance approving rezoning property T3 Suburban to T5 Urban Center for 105 Southwest 9th Street, fourplex at 105 Southwest 9th Street. Your Honor, move the bill be approved on its first reading and proceed with the second. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Yes. Uh, Councilmember Member Cole I would just like to say that I'm very excited the fact that they are keeping this historic building uh, rather than plowing it down, which happens way too often. So I do appreciate that, and I think that it's a, a well-known building here in town. So I'm glad to see it stay. Further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Both same sign. Second reading of Bill 5199, an ordinance approving rezoning property T3 Suburban to T5 Urban Center for 105 Southwest 9th Street, fourplex at 105 Southwest 9th Street. Your Honor, move to approve the second reading and provide the proper ordinance number. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Roll call. Councilmember Levesay? Aye. Fowler? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Edmondson? Aye. Culpepper? Aye. Kaler? Aye. Mayor Ross? Aye. Carried unanimously and given ordinance number 5315. Next introduction reading will be on number 5200. I will introduce your honor. Okay. First reading of Bill 5200, an ordinance approving the general development plan for 105 Southwest 9th Street, fourplex at 105 Southwest 9th Street. Your honor, move the bill be approved on its first reading and proceed with the second. Is there a second? Second. second. Discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Both same sign. Second reading of Bill 5200, an ordinance approving the general development plan for 105 Southwest 9th Street, fourplex at 105 Southwest 9th Street. Your honor, move to approve the second reading and apply the proper ordinance number. Is there a second? Second. second. Discussion? Roll call. Councilmember Fowler? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Edmondson? Aye. Culpepper? Aye. Kaler? Aye. Levesse? Aye. Mayor Ross? Aye. Carried unanimously and given ordinance number 5316. Okay, next we'll move on to the public hearing on Hudson Estates. Mayor, the city has one exhibit to enter into the record. City Council information form dated March 26, 2024 with the following attachments. Staff report with attachments, application with attachments, affidavit of publication in the examiner on March 9, 2024, 185 foot notification map, names addresses of property owners within 185 feet of the site, copy of letter sent to said property owners, title four land use section, Blue Springs Code of Ordinances by reference, 2014 comprehensive plan by reference, letter regarding tree line and bill approving the general development plan. This is all we have to enter for the record. Okay, staff report. I do. Dave McCumber, 903 West Main Street, on behalf of the city. Before you this evening is a planning application for a general development plan that was submitted by Kyle Miller of Crockett Engineering Consultants on behalf of the property owner, Century Real Estate LLC, 
for a property generally located east of Seven Highway, south of Cordell Mason Elementary, and north of the Eagles Ridge subdivision. The general development plan consists of 60, uh, a 60 unit apartment complex called Hudson Estates, located in an MF 14 moderate density multifamily residential zoning district. The existing land use on the property today is considered vacant or undeveloped. The proposed land use is a multifamily housing development. The proposed building type for this development is an apartment complex. The city's future land use map designates this particular area as a mixed density neighborhood, areas which is defined as areas for residential living arranged in a neighborhood pattern with access to supporting uses. Net density for these areas is typically five to 12 units per acre. A range of housing formats, institutional uses, uses or micro commercial uses that are compatible with the neighborhood scale may be incorporated at strategic locations. The applicant is proposing to construct a 60-unit single-story apartment complex that consists, that consists of six fourplex and six sixplex buildings and a community building. The general development plan area is approximately 15.27 acres and is comprised of two lots. Approximately 60% of the lots are proposed for development with this application. The remaining balance of lots one and two will remain undeveloped until a separate application is submitted in the future. The apartment build buildings are inward facing, turned away from the proposed public street, and will be accessed from private drives and parking lot areas. The buildings utilize four-sided architecture with brick, stone, and vinyl siding and each unit is provided covered entrances. The apartment complex building type requires a minimum of 40% open space, 10% of which shall be active open space. The applicant is proposing 43% open space and 10.1% active open space. The, by providing, uh, I'm sorry, by providing two outdoor amenity areas and a pedestrian sidewalk circulation system that allows residents to walk the entire development. The internal sidewalk system will connect to the public sidewalks that will be required along the extension of Southwest Hudson Drive. The development will be required to construct a residential collector street, Southwest Hudson, and when fully constructed it will extend from Seven Highway on the west and to the development's eastern boundary and terminate with a temporary turnaround. Along the public street, a limits of no access is proposed to limit the number of access points along its frontage and improve pedestrian and vehicular, vehicular safety. A traffic Im impact study was performed and provided to the city staff for review. In conclusion of the report, staff agrees that there will be minimal impacts to the traffic in the immediate area once this development is completed. Landscape buff buffers are required along Southwest Hudson Drive, the west and the south property lines for lots one and two. If the undeveloped areas of lots and two Lots one and two are proposed for development in the future. Compliant landscape buffers for the east and south property lines will be required at that time. Within the development area, the south property line of lot two, which is adjacent to the Eagles Ridge subdivision, will have a 15 foot wide tree protection area easement. The applicant has chosen to preserve the dense tree line between the two developments instead of removing the mature vegetation to establish a new landscape buffer. With that, staff re recommends approval of the general development plan with two conditions. Okay, any questions from Council Member Colco? Uh, yes, and I, I've already uh, talked with Mr. Mallon about this, but can you um, show us where this property, um, where, uh, not Christian Drive, uh, Washington Drive comes down? See if it, I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure if it picks up on these drawings. Let's see, the, yeah, the aerial. The drawing, they had had it on there, but it was so large I couldn't yeah. see the whole there. thing. So here is, if you can see it on there. Okay, and so this, uh, those pieces that are not developed, is that um, this uh, right hand side that's on their property? Am I making sense? 
um, directly south of Cordell Mason. Yeah, that. Here? Right. Um, that's so the part th that's not developed. All, all of it is currently not developed, but that particular section is the area, mostly the area that will remain undeveloped until another application That was my back. question. Because yeah. I know we really do want that connection with Washington to yeah. come down so that there's uh, a, a way to get back out to 7 Highway. It's something we've wanted for a long time. And I just wanted to clarify that that was not meeting this at this point. Yeah, and so not at this point. Um, additionally, to the east that's kind of off of this property is the Eagles Creek subdivision. Mm -hmm. And future phases of that will connect over to here and tie Hudson all the way across and allow that Washington right, to I, I just into. wanted clarification on that because I think it's important. The residents really do want something to happen there. Sure. Thank you. Anyone else? Councilmember Fowler? I, I guess, uh, Hudson, can you show us on there what the, where that starts at and goes to, where it finishes up? Uh, well, across the side, yeah. Right. Oh, the air. Okay. Yeah, because I, I saw it on the drawing, but I couldn't quite visualize yeah. it on the site. Can you see the cursor there? Yeah. So it'll align with South Southgate Drive right. at 7 Highway, extend across, and as it's cutting across these tracks here, it'll do an S-curve and align pretty centralized across the two sites and run straight back, and then it'll terminate with a temporary turnaround. And it was, it was in line with the Eagles Creek preliminary plat for Hudson as well, so that's where they kind of line up and would meet each other in the so future. So they'll be accessing the property off of 7? Yes. Okay. And there's no connection to uh, Eagles Ridge? There's nothing proposed at this time. Um, Southwest 5th Street is considered kind of a frontage or a backing road to 7 Highway, so in the future, a different development that may come in this uh, area here that's not a part of this uh, request. Um, could see an extension to carry Fifth Street on, on a cross, uh, but that would be dependent on a future development from a different applicant. That, from Seven Highway to where the site boundary is, is that property owned by them or are they gonna have to get that to make that, put the road in? Yeah, it is owned by them um, and they'll be required to plat it those two areas as tracks. Um, and then at which time later down the road, if somebody wanted to come in, they would then have to plat them as lots before they could build anything on them. So in order for us to establish right away, they would have to at least be platted as tracks. Yeah. And what else? Well, I got just a little bit more, Your Honor. Um, yeah, it is kind of uh, unique that it's just not connecting up to the north or the south. Uh, I, I get it coming off of seven, it looks like they're trying to build a little island in there almost, so uh, that does seem odd. The uh, I think there is, if I had it right, there was incentives on this from the state, and that triggers uh, the age of, you said it was senior citizens, senior housing? Yeah, um, and the developers here can speak more specific to it, um, but as we understand, there were state incentives for seniors to live there, which I think kind of limits that to only seniors while those incentives are in place, so they could speak to that as well. Okay, I just want to learn a little bit more about that. Anyone else? Okay, we're gonna go to the applicant. The applicant like to come be sworn in. Kyle Miller, 1000 West Knife Hall in Columbia, Missouri. <clears throat> uh, good evening. Here with the request tonight for general development plan of Hudson Estates. Um, I am Kyle Miller with Crockett Engineering, civil engineer for the project. With me tonight, Dan Sanders, uh, part of the development team, MAKO Development. So we are before you tonight, general uh, development overview here. Uh, our general development plan, the entire portion of it encompasses 25.17 acres. Um, we are developing, the developer is developing just a section of all of that uh, for lots one and two, which will be the 15 acres Mr. McCumber stated earlier. Uh, the area of, of the development is zoned currently MF14 for multifamily. So our plan contains two uh, multifamily lots and two tracks on the west side of the property. Uh, there's also the Hudson Drive, which is going through the property for 2.3 acres. Of the multifamily development, there is 60 total units. 
which will incorporate six sixplexes and six fourplexes. Uh, these apartments will be garden style apartment buildings, two bedroom units for all of them. And this is a 55 plus age restricted development. It is an agreement made between the developer and the people who sign, the residents who sign. It is part of the agreement. Uh, all residents that are signing that have to be 55 and plus in age. Yes, they can have their grandkids there. They can have family members over. We're not restricting that. But to be there for, I believe it's a 72 hour period, it's, it is defined in the agreement. You have to be 55 plus for this development. Uh, additionally, this, uh, this does come before you tonight, meeting all of Blue Springs city code and regulations. So you have seen this already, um, but this is the overview of the entire development. Uh, we have our tracks on the west side, uh, the lots one and two on the east side, Hudson Drive, which will be going through the center, connecting directly across from the other road on the west side as it connects to Highway 7. Uh, units on both the north and south side with uh, apartments as well as drives making a loop uh, to have the continuous access. A couple of items of interest tonight I wanted to discuss with you. Uh, Blue Springs comprehensive plan, the traffic for this development, stormwater, and landscape buffering. So part of Blue Springs comprehensive plan, this is in the S1 specific plan area. Uh, it's for mixed density neighborhoods. So part of that S1 specific plan is to allow a zoning separation if, of for the developments. And that's exactly what this particular development does. It has our general highway, general business, Highway 7 on the west side, our single family on the east side, and this allows that buffer and that separation right between it for the multifamily. Another part of the specific area plan uh, wants to create that local streets and the connectivity that abuts and connects to Highway 7. And again, that's exactly what this development does. Uh, it, it draws from the neighborhood on the, the west side, or the east side, I'm sorry, to connect right to Highway 7. And here's a, uh, an illustration of what we're talking about there with the general business on the west side, single family on the east, and again, we're, we're right there in the middle allowing that separation. So moving into traffic, uh, Hudson Drive will be a city standard, city collector street, 60 foot wide right of way with 32 foot of pavement, sidewalks on both sides, going from Highway 7 to the east side of the property. Uh, to answer the question about the Eagle Ridge subdivision and um, Washington Street coming down, uh, we will have our road connect all the way to as far on the property line as we can, we can connect and line up, it currently lines up with the preliminary plat of the Eagle Ridge, Ridge subdivision. So as that does develop in the future, that connection is there, it's ready to be made uh, as it develops. In regards to the Fifth Street uh, question earlier, we are developing tracks one and two. Um, the property on the west side, tracks A, tracks A and B, they will be developed in the future. Should those be developed in the future, another general development plan and preliminary plat will have to come, or not preliminary plat, but the general development plan will have to come back before you. Uh, and that is when the, the road would be made a legal lot and can have that uh, Fifth Street connect to Hudson Drive and allow that additional road extended to the north. In addition to traffic, this again is a senior development, 55 plus, and it's found um, from the developer and general statement that seniors usually have different patterns and, and less traffic flow than your typical eight to five jobs, peak at morning hour, peak afternoon hour. Uh, and with that, traffic will be less for this particular development. There has been a traffic impact study done for this development. Uh, we are currently working with MoDOT. They have seen the traffic impact study as well as the city, uh, and we are uh, further coordinating with them. Briefly touching on our stormwater quality, water quality for this development, uh, we are meeting all of Blue Springs Municipal Code. We will have detention basin installed for the development to reduce the peak runoff for our stor uh, major storm events. Uh, we will have BMPs and specific uh, water quality features installed on the site to meet those requirements as well. Lastly here are landscaping. Um, again, we, we're meeting all of uh, City of Blue Springs code with the parking lot, street trees, as well as buffering. Uh, buffering will be required on the west side of the development with the, against the general business. It will also be required on the south side uh, next to the single family residential. There are two types of options for our buffering when abutting single family residential. The seven foot spacing and the 15 foot spacing uh, with the restrictions of 45 points every 100 feet for the seven foot 
as well as 30 for every 100 foot of the 15. What we've decided to do is install a 15 foot wide natural tree buffer instead of use options A and B. And what that's going to do is create a denser buffer between the neighborhood to the south. So instead of ripping um, all the current landscaping out that's there and coming back and planting trees every 20 to 25 feet as per what the code would require, we're going to leave that natural um, buffer up as it is now that provides uh, that barrier. If you want to go in here and zoom in, you can see, uh, and if you can zoom in for me, Dave, that'd be great. But on the south side, in addition to that, there's also a 10-foot utility easement. And so there'll be that space as well as the 15-foot buffer creating a 25-foot wide separation between the neighborhood's pro property line as well as where any of our development will start and additional space before the buildings in that area as well. Uh, one more. This uh, the next slide will show um, it is it's what the current condition looks of the tr at the end of the street. So you can see this natural buffer. If we were to rip all those out and put a tree every 20 feet, you wouldn't have quite the buffer that you would of, of leaving that in there. And that's why we decided to go with that tree preservation uh, easement. So briefly, here's a rendering of the community building. Uh, in that, we will have exercise room, the community room, a uh, living room with TVs, is, uh, the idea of a kitchen in there as well for the community to have meals. Uh, and also in that space, we'll have a leasing office and social, social services building. The outside amenities will be a pavilion with picnic table and barbecue grill. And lastly, our residential building here that will comprise of approximately 1,000 heated square feet for each unit. Again, two bedroom units. All, all uh, units will have washer, dryers, range, microwaves, refrigerators, dishwashers, heating, cooling. Uh, these will be built to the National Association of Home Builders, Green Building Code, as well as Universal Design Standards. So to, in conclusion, again, this, this meets the intent of the zoning. Um, it does have the proper and adequate stormwater control. We did have a neighborhood meeting on the 13th of this month, or uh, I'm sorry, last month now. Uh, we did have approval from P&Z last week. Uh, and this does come recommended to you by staff, meeting all uh, city code without any design requests, design adjustment requests. So at this time, I'll take any questions. Any questions, Councilmember Fowler? <clears throat> yes, on the uh, incentives that you're getting from the state, how long does it require that you put the restriction of 55 and older on that property? Is, is there some, some time? It's, it's a 30 year it, agreement, is that right? 30 year? 30 year. 30 year. All right. Good, good. 30 year land use agreement, that's right. And then I do have one more uh, question for, kind of for staff on, on this relative to the roads. Um, and you may be able to help with this too. If we bring up uh, Adobe page 81 in the packet, <clears throat> I think I can ask my question. Yeah, the colors are a little bit different. Um, zoom in just a little bit if you can, and then, and then scroll just a little bit to the south. There you go, right there. So I can see Fifth Street there on the, on the left of uh, Eagles Ridge, and it's heading north and I can visualize where that's gonna run into Hudson. And same thing on the other side, where it's Southwest 2nd Street, I can see how that would continue to go north. 3rd mm -hmm. Street looks like it runs right into the, like building 10 or 11. I mean, when, if, if people are heading north on 3rd Street, their lights are gonna be shining right in the back of one of those. Well, that's one reason we're having the 15 foot buffer installed in that area. Uh, okay. Yeah, and so we'll have the 10-foot utility, 15-foot buffer. All those trees will be there uh, is to create that space as well as, again, the setback for the building is from that. That is a dead-end road, um, so anyone that would go there, less likely there's going to be too many people traveling down that to have those, those lights shining in there. I guess, and, and maybe this is my question for staff, is that that, to me, looks like a road that's stubbed out to go through. I don't know where our planning was that we would just – dead in that thing and not al allow it to be to head north like that. It just doesn't um, seem like good planning. I believe the intent was to have 3rd Street go through um, uh, as part of this subdivision design from Eagles Creek. Um, however, in the development, the developer site plan proposed, they did not want it to go through. Um, and I believe there was some talk at the resident meeting or the neighborhood meeting about um, the street connection. Yeah, so maybe the developer could speak to. So a couple things on that. Uh, 
this, this street, street spacing is spaced out more for single family residential, and that's not really what we're having here with the multifamily. It's one large complex, not having the streets going all the way through. Once the entire thing is developed, you will still have that connectivity all the way around the development. <clears throat> when we did attend the neighborhood meeting, it was very adamant from the neighbors that they wanted no connections to Hudson if we could do that. We told them that is not uh, probably going to happen in the long term of not having that connection. Part of the city as well as the specific area plan is to make those connections. However, at this time, there would be no connection um, to, to that subdivision to the south. But they did, they did know that as development does occur on to the east and the west of us, that those could be uh, extended up and connected to Hudson. Yeah, and, and so in reviewing that, um, I think staff was of the opinion that with the connection of 5th Street and the future connection of 2nd Street to Washington, which will both go north to intersect the east-west Hudson, that there was enough connectivity still um, on the single family portion from Eagles Ridge through uh, Eagles Creek and on up to Lake Village. And then again on the commercial side uh, through 5th Street that the third street connection really wasn't um, an absolute necessary connection to be made. Yeah, that just seems like, so, so I guess third street is what it is today is what it's gonna look like in the future. It's just gonna dead end there in front of, and, and if they went straight, they'd hit one of those buildings. I know it's 15 feet, but. Yes. Okay. All right. And it will be more like 75 feet All with right. the, the buffering and the spacing in the building. So there will be a pretty good space between those two. The applicant seeing none, thank you. Thank you. You will go to the public. Anyone know what it's like to speak in support of? Support of opposition to opposition to close this public hearing. Who would like to introduce bill number 5201? I will introduce it. First reading of Bill 5201, an ordinance approving the general development plan for Hudson Estates located east of Seven Highway, south of Cordell Mason Elementary School, and north of the Eagles Ridge subdivision. Your Honor, move the bill be approved on its first reading and proceed to the second. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? We have a discussion, Your Honor? Yes, go ahead. Uh, this is to staff. Uh, did we, I noticed the parking spaces are 9 by 18. Didn't we require that being increased in size like 18 and a half feet deep? Or am I off on my thinking? It seems like we had a project came through that that had eighteen and a half feet deep parking. Yeah, so during the uh, development review of this project, we took a look at um, the dimensions of those um, parking spaces and what the developer did provide a wider sidewalk to allow for a vehicle overhang on it. So it allowed them to utilize a slightly shorter uh, parking stall depth okay. on this project. So that's kind of how they handled that particular criteria. Okay. My concern is that, you know, nowadays those pickup trucks are pretty long and, you know, um, Elderly people or people over 55 may be driving pickup trucks and it may stick out further into that roadway than, than say, a regular car. Sure. So um, I have some concerns with that. Any other discussion? Well, I, I'm just to kind of ride on what Councilman Edmondson is talking about. So how deep, if I, if I was going to park in one of these lots, I don't know how long my car is, but if I was going to park in one of these spaces, would it automatically overhang? Your vehicle? Yeah. Um, if you're, the sidewalk allows that, the depth of it allows for the overhang, so your, your front tire hitting that curb of that sidewalk would allow the vehicle to overhang however the far the front end of your vehicle is, a foot well, and a half what's or, the point of that? or two feet. So every, everybody who has a car parked in the driveway is going to be sticking out over the sidewalk? Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, that, that is true. But what they did was provided a wider sidewalk so that there were, there's still about four feet width of width 
across that for plenty of walking space. There, uh, there does appear to be, if the applicant were to be able to discuss this a little bit more, um, the north building setback is a 20-foot building line, and it does look like the building parking spaces could be accommodated at 18 and a half, and the drive aisle be the, the appropriate width. Well, I saw the I saw the sidewalk designation at six foot. So typically, it's a five foot sidewalk would require there, or is that? Or you're saying we require a four foot sidewalk, and they went ahead and went to six, so they'd have that overlap. Yes, I, be I believe so. That way, they can actually leave the front end of the vehicle out, extend it over. Can I speak on the, speak on this? <coughs> you just one in, so go ahead. Okay. So yeah, I mean that that's the general idea, and I think it's following most all developments uh, from any multifamily. Uh, you have your standard as city code width of nine feet, depth of 18 or 18 and a half in this case, with a, a standard five foot sidewalk. I mean, that's just the standard industry standard when you, whenever you're doing any development. And that's what most, any multifamily you'd go to, you're gonna see. So additionally, in this case, we're adding that extra foot instead of on the back end, it'd be on the front end. So if, instead of having the overhang on the front, you're actually getting that extra foot as opposed to just hoping people stay back um, on any development, especially in this case, to allow for those uh, connectivity and sidewalk around. Does that answer the question? How, how long is a pickup truck? Your Honor. <laughs> yes, Councilman McKay. <laughs> We're talking about six inches. Yeah. Right. I mean, he, he's added almost two feet extra to the sidewalk. You're only going to stick over six inches. Okay. You still gained 18 inches. So whether we're talking 20, a six foot sidewalk or four foot sidewalk, even at eight and a half foot, we're still in the, in within, he's done extra to accommodate it. So I don't know why we're worried about six inches when we got 18 in, inches extra. Well, Thank I you. didn't know it was six inches. That's what I was asking. I have no idea how long I'm trying to help is. you out, <laughs> Council Member. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Certainly specification of pickup trucks is not an issue here. <laughs> Okay, thank you. No further. One, one more. Um, on that drawing right there, we see it at the bottom part of that. It's got EET. I assume that's where the third street is going to dead end. Yeah. Yep. And, and that is just not that far off uh, to go straight up to Hudson. We had Hudson on there just a minute ago. It's just a little jog to the right. Uh, I realize it would probably have to take out a building, but. To me, that's going to be a potential deal breaker here in that I, 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 some of the citizens that live over there on 3rd Street may not want to connect it, but ultimately 5th and 2nd will, and it just seems odd that we would leave a dead end like that um, that close to Hudson to me. It just doesn't look like it's good planning, so I'm concerned with that. Any other discussion? Go on to first reading. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. No. Okay, Aye. we got, I think it's two no's. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second reading. Second reading of Bill 5201, an ordinance approving the general development plan for Hudson Estates located east of 7 Highway, south of Cordell Mason Elementary School, and north of the Eagles Ridge subdivision. Your Honor, move to approve the second reading and apply to proper ordinance number. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Roll call. Councilmember Erickson? No. Edmondson? Aye. Culpepper? Aye. Kaler? Aye. Levesay? No. Fowler? No. Mayor Ross? Aye. Motion carries and given ordinance number 5317. Okay, uh, next I'm going to have someone so move that the public hearing on Adams Ridge rezoning and plan development concept plan be continued to the May 20th, 2024 City Council meeting. So, so moved. Move. Okay, we got a motion. There's a second. Second. Discussion. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, same <coughs> sign. Motion carries. Okay, now I'm going to need approval of the first reading because we never did do the first and second reading on the uh, Bill 5194. So I need a motion to approve the first reading of Bill number 5194. Your Honor, move the uh, bill be approved on its first reading and proceed with the second. Is there a second? Second. Order. In a discussion, yeah. Councilmember Fowler. Um, I guess I uh, want to summarize, or has staff summarized, the changes 
since we last talked about this. Okay. Um, if staff could do that in person. Yes, we can do that. I guess there, there was a citizen's concern at the public hearing because a number of these lots did not meet the requirements for large lot subdivision. And uh, we did ask that staff go back and review that with the developer and uh, make sure that they did comply, I guess. So if you'll explain what happened then. Yeah. So I do want to update you as well. We received one more protest petition after the city council hearing on March 4th. So we are now at eight protest petitions for the zoning, but we still don't meet the minimum 30% to trigger that supermajority vote. Um, and then also the Planning Commission staff report that's in the packet has not been updated since it went to Planning Commission. It's not going to be updated as that is a reflection of what happened at that public hearing and what happened at the first public hearing here. The CIF for today or the Council Information Form has all of the updates outlined and the new revised plans attached. So that includes modifying all of the lots so that they all comply with that 100 foot minimum frontage width and then all cul-de-sac lots are only required an 80 foot minimum frontage width and so that eliminated two of the conditions or it was condition one a and b and c so that can took out con condition one b and one c so we only have one modification at this point which is allow for this lot number 23 to be larger than the maximum lot area. So currently it caps at one acre for this zoning district and they're requesting that this be allowed to be larger than that. And let's see, it still has 231 single family lots. So the density is still 1.73 dwelling units per acre. The average lot size remains at 0 0.38 acres. Um, in the plan, the lot numbers and the tract letters have changed. So the developer did include a tract table down here of what will be in each tract. We also, they included a playground that has been added since the last time and a additional detention tract was ne ne necessitated, sorry, by the decrease in size of tract J so that the adjacent lots could meet that frontage width requirement. So a new detention tract has been added as well and the total open space is now at 28.37 acres, which is equivalent to 21.2% of the total site. And those are the updates that they made since the last time we met. Okay, and, and this drawing uh, is, will be tied by the proposed ordinance um, that makes this a requirement. Yes. Okay. yes. We'll make sure of that as well. Um, Secondly, if you could show uh, Wyatt Road between uh, Amsbury Parkway and Litchford. There was, uh, we did discuss that and staff has prepared a motion for me to uh, read here. Okay. Just want to make sure we're all talking the same thing. Before this development can be fully built out, there, there would be a significant amount of uh, traffic added and we've added a condition in here that uh, I'll, I'll read the proposal. The propo proposed amendment is basically saying that Wyatt is gonna be improved from Adamsbury Parkway to Litchford. And the reason I say Litchford is because to the east of Litchford, there is a uh, property already zoned, or already annexed into the city of Blue Springs um, that I assume the mid could also develop. So I think it'd be good uh, to make sure that Wyatt is improved that entire way. But uh, I'll, I'll read the proposal. Proposed amendment to add a conditional of approval to the general development plan, which would add condition two prior to the issuance of the 147th single family home building permit, all of East Wyatt Road shall be improved to full width residential collector street classification standards and specifications from Adamsbury Parkway to South Litchford Road. Okay. And I, I realize that may be during the general development plan, but I certainly want to talk about it before we do the rezoning. So. Is that a motion? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, is there a second? On second. The motion? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and second. Discussion on the amendment, proposed amendment. Uh, Your Honor? Yes. I have a question that is not on the amendment, but it would be a question that might be more appropriate. I don't know when it would be. I have a question. 
question about the septic potential. Okay, if it's not on his amendment, then we'll vote, mm -hmm. go ahead and vote on the amendment. Yeah. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Both same sign. Okay, the amendment is adopted. So now we have discussion on the amendment, on the uh, ordinance as amended, first reading as amended. Can I, can I ask staff a yeah. question? I, I'm sorry, I didn't think about this in the past several meetings we had on it, but I believe I'm correct. A little uh, piece, uh, I think it's 8312 Litchford, that's 1.54 acres, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I would assume that's on septic, is that correct? I don't have the address. If, I'm assuming it's this property and it would be in the county. And I think that the owner is out there saying yes. Well, I, just, I, guess I have a concern. I, I, I don't know what that does with 1.54 acres. I, I assume that the county now requires a greater number of acres for septic. And I don't know what 1.54 acres of septic would do to the backyards and uh, the surrounding property. I, I, maybe it's a question that should have been asked a long time ago, but I, I just thought of it this evening. Uh, I think it's a good question. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the county would do with an existing structure or lot uh, that is less than their requirement of three acres today, which is what their requirement is for a septic, a new septic system is to be on a three acre lot. Um, and they do not allow any of the septic system itself or the leach field to cross a property line. Uh, so any kind of septic system would have to be contained uh, within that lot itself. Um, and so uh, we do have some other facilities in and around town, uh, some lots. We just recently annexed one over on Vesper because the septic system failed, but all of those lots along there that are not in the city are all on septic, so they're allowed to remain on septic um, as long as nothing's drastically changing to their septic system. What? So we would be kind of in that situation. If that becomes a problem, would it be possible for that property, if the owner so wished, to, to join on to the... Uh, city septic? Uh, potentially. Uh, it has been a city policy to require properties that wish to connect to the sewer system to annex first. Okay, that's good enough answer. If, if, at least there's a solution if it becomes a problem. Yes. Okay, thanks. Any other questions from the council? Yeah, uh, I do have one more for staff. Um, staff put together uh, dwelling units per acre within uh, basically the southern area of Blue Springs, the NID. If you could bring that up, I wanted to understand that clearly for our citizens. And this is to show density of uh, basically all the subdivisions. And it's been a number of years since uh, these have all been approved. The density on the far right is dwelling units per acre. The very top one on the list is Proverb Estates and it, uh, unfortunately, that, that is kind of in the same vicinity, it never got built. And I think the, the plan has now expired, if I'm correct. That is correct. And that is certainly a large lot subdivision that uh, I know we were excited to approve. Uh, it was good to see somebody propose that. Uh, unfortunately, it did not get built out. So there is not anyone that's down at one unit per acre. Um, the Shores, which is 48 homes, is 1.35. Poodal Ridge would be the third one on this at 1.67 dwelling units per acre. Is that? That's yes, that's correct. I also want to just point out that the, the shores of Chapman Farms, um, the lot sizes are roughly similar, smaller. similar in size, but the density of that subdivision uh, provided for you on this chart is uh, almost artificially low because it included the lake or a portion of the lake as the open space. Okay. Um, so that so if we were to not include that and just face it, but like with the Hoodow Meadows, we included the gross density of all the property and then the number of units on it. So, um, but the lot sizes of the shores of Chapman Farms are similar to the lot sizes being proposed here this evening. A lar large lot subdivision. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess to, the, to, to our, I know there's been a concern by our citizens. They wanted, uh, they wanted large lot which is like one per acre. Um, unfortunately, that has not proved to work out, uh, you know, at, at least in Proverbs. Uh, but this is certainly one of the least dense projects that we have seen be proposed. And we have seen 
many projects on this specific property at, at much higher densities that we did turn down. Um, this one I want to say is, is uh, low density compared to what we've seen in the past. We have worked to ensure that we meet all the requirements for large lot subdivisions with the changes tonight and also that we have uh, we put a limit on development until the road until why it is completely improved so that does not account for all the citizens concerns that we've heard of in this process but uh, I, if we turn this down if the council was to turn this down I fear we'd be doing the same thing over again with much higher densities there's no reason somebody wouldn't come back and and ask for the projects that they have in the past I think this is probably one of those reasonable lower density projects that we uh, is going to be at that location myself so I just want to pass that on to the citizens further discussion seeing none all in favor of the first reading as amended say aye aye, aye. opposed same sign no okay one no second reading second reading of bill 5194 and just to clarify this is on the rezoning which I, I believe was not amended it's the general development plan correct Okay. Uh, second reading of Bill 5194, an ordinance approving rezoning property AG Agriculture County to SF12 large lot single family for Hoot Owl Meadows. Got to move to approve the second reading and apply the proper ordinance number. You said as amended, right? Uh, it's the, in the next one. It's another one. It's the general it's development. Second. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, out in favor. Oh, okay, now it's roll call. Oh, I didn't have a second on that. I'm sorry. Second. second. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Edmondson? Aye. Culpepper? Aye. Kaler? Aye. Levisay? No. Fowler? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Mayor Ross? Aye. Motion carries and given ordinance number 5318. Next, I have an introduction to ring of bill number 5203. I'll introduce you, Your Honor. Okay. First reading of Bill 5203 as amended, an ordinance approving the general development plan for Hoot Owl Meadows at the southwest corner of East Wyatt Road and South Lickford Road as amended. Your Honor, move the bill to be approved as amended and, and, and proceed with the second. Second. Please. Discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Same sign. Second read of Bill 5203 as amended, an ordinance approving the general development plan for Hoot Owl Meadows at the southwest corner of East Wyatt Road and South Lickford Road as amended. Your Honor, move to approve the second reading and apply the proper ordinance number. Second. 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 Discussion? Roll call. Councilmember Culpepper? Aye. Kaler? Aye. Levisay? Aye. aye. Fowler? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Edmondson? Aye. Mayor Ross? Aye. Carried unanimously and given ordinance number 5319. Okay, I have two visitors' appearance forms. Uh, James Mullen. It's on Hoot Isle, which has just been passed. Good evening. All right, three minutes. Okay, good evening, Council. Thank you for this opportunity to address you. It's rather surprising over the 17 years, the two prior attempts to develop the property in question have been soundly rejected by council after fervent rejection by surrounding property owners. And yet, council's again considering the proposal, another proposal. In each of the prior proposals, adjacent landowners, as well as nearby property owners and residents, made it clear to council that the proposed developments were too dense for fitting into the surrounding areas. Previously, it was made clear to council that developments consisting of two to three acre lots would be consistent with the surrounding environment. In fact, I would challenge any of you to define public planning for sustainable development as anything less than minimizing negative impacts on the environment and ensuring social equity. This plan does not fit either element of the accepted definition of public planning for sustainable development, and as such, we, were, we urge you to reject the proposal. Thank you. All right. Martin Underwood. The Martin Underwood here. You want to come up? You got three minutes. Go ahead. Well, I'm totally against this project. I live across the street, 230 homes in my front yard. It's not what I want. I know that you're You've got the uh, land bank money tied up. That's what you're focused on, and I understand that. But I want to tell you, I did move out in the country. 
We have 230 homes across the street, and I'm really not very happy. And I know you don't care, but I do care. I live there. You've approved it. I just hope that you've got enough knowledge that this development's going to go in there and it's going to run right down on the floodplain. Are you liable for approving a division like this? Do those people down there on, on Litchford get flooded out? You don't think they might want to sue you or sue the developer? Not only that, what are you going to do with the, hundred, the 70 acres of wooded land that's across the street on the south side? Are you going to burn it? Are you going to grind it up? Are you going to haul it off? I want to know because if you're not going to burn it, we won't be able to stand it out there if you burn 70 acres of wooded land. Could you anybody drive by and take a look? These people down in Litchford, they're going to have traffic from what I understand coming out of this development on Litchford. Is that correct? I guess nobody knows. Maybe staff knows. Or maybe they don't want to want to respond. But those people on Litchford, this guy that lives right there at Litchford at the corner of Litchford and Wyatt, he's got it built all around him. You think he wants He's got probably three to five acres. He, he's going to want 230 homes around his house. Think again, guys. We're very unhappy. And we understand why it was voted in. Because the NID decision was made years ago. And it may not have been the right decision. But it's gone through. And you got what you want. Thank you for your time. All right. Next. Next. Uh is mayoral announcements. Tomorrow is election day. My successor will be chosen from one of the three members of the council setting up here tonight. So, that being said, my thoughts to Punda tonight is from Nanette Haywood. And it says, and I quote, Talk is cheap, voting is free. Take it to the polls, end quote. I accept the motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. 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 I'll be right. All right. Same sign. We adjourn.